Hello everybody, welcome back to another Stormworks video. And um, today I'm going to be working on, or actually I'm just going to be showing you how to make your own customizable reloading mechanism for any of the two large cannons. So as you can see here, I've got um, this tank that I built uh, the first time that I saw the new weapons update out. And I've got this, you can see the system here, it's a wee bit laggy, but if I aim this, let's say, over there, zoom in a wee bit, alright, turn on the laser, crack the laser, and get this to aim to exactly where the laser is, just by adjusting it a wee bit, then I can shoot, and this will reload, loading, and ready, and then I can shoot again, and I can do this as many times as I like, you know, until I run out of ammo, which and this is never going to happen. But yeah, that's basically the gist of what I'm going to be showing you how to make today. Alright. So basically I'm going to show you this thing that I've made up. Alright. And as you can see, these all these cannons, or these two anyway, these are automatically reloading. I have not done anything to influence this, it's just doing it automatically. There we go. So now both of those reloaded quite quickly and efficiently. And if I set these off, this is going to set all the guns off, but... You can see there that the two big guns did shoot. Alright. So all these these little guns, you don't actually have to do anything to reload them. You just grab some ammo, put it in there. Grab some ammo, put it in there. Like that. So that, that's reloaded. And then it's the same for this. You just grab some ammo, put it in there. Alright. And so there we go. Those two just reloaded. For now though, they have no ammo, so they're just going to close up. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys how to do this. And I'm going to start off with just a Bertha cannon. Like so. Put it down. And grab a feeder. And you've got to make sure that the arrow is pointing down into the cannon. That is very important, otherwise it won't feed it. And I'm just going to grab another one for good measure, just to show you guys that it is actually working. Alright, high explosive, high explosive. And then, we want to grab ourselves a microcontroller. So, for this, I'm going to make a new one. Okay. So, for logic, we grab an on-off, 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 on-off. Simple change two of these to outputs. This is going to be our feed and our open to open up the um, open up the breach which is where the cannon gets uh, loaded through and the feeder which feeds the cannon rounds. And these two, this one's going to be our loaded from the cannon itself and this one's going to be a force feed which will tell you why that's necessary later. I'll just name them up. loaded um, and then this one will be for breach open or maybe vice versa but you know feeder okay so feed it breach open loaded and force feed now that's basically what makes up the majority of what I've got here and 
I'm going to start doing a wee bit of logic now. So, first thing we want, what do we want first? We want our, when we have no, when we have no ammo in the chamber, we want it to open the breach and defeat it. Can't be that simple though, can it? So if we just grab a knot gate, and feed the loaded into it, so if it's not loaded, open these two. So the issue with that though, is that when we open up breach, this will feed around into it, but rather than having it that it just feeds around into it and then leaves it there, because we need this to close back up, because it won't tell us that it's not lo that it's loaded if the breach is still open. So what we've got to do next is we've got to grab a capacitor and a push, um, toggle to push. So the toggle to push is going to change this to a pulse so that the capacitor doesn't just stay on permanently. Okay, so when we put that to there, we need to turn this down to zero seconds so that it starts when there is a pulse and then we need our discharge time to be a number between 0 and 10. Okay. And I have actually determined this number just, you know, before. And 2.2 .2 was the minimum we could get for an artillery cannon before the breach closed, before the round was entered. However, we don't want the minimum, we want the maximum because otherwise we could end up with, say, a round that is a little bit further down in our ammo belt that doesn't end up getting fed into it because of the time delay and the closing before. So if, it, so if the breach closes before the round gets to it, like, you know, some, some ammo belts may be more comp complicated than others, we want this to have a little bit of delay. So, I went for 3 seconds, which is what I found I could get away with, without actually, um, without breaking it, basically. So, then we want an OR gate. It may not be completely necessary, but we're going to grab our force feed then, and we're going to force feed our feeder and our breach. Okay. So now that that is working, let's go test it out. And I believe I've actually gotten a... I've got a Bertha cannon, but I've gone ahead and made one for the artillery. So I'll just spawn an artillery beside it. Grab an artillery cannon feeder. Make sure it's facing down and grab a straight. Okay, so we'll grab that. High explosive. And high explosive. Alright, so now what we want is battery, because we of course need electricity. And I'll just hook these two up to power. Now I'll grab my gun reload. Okay, I must have named it my controller. It's per usual. There we go, that is. Okay, so we want our force feed, our loaded, coming from there. We want our feeder to get into there, and our breach open to get into there. Now we also want a button. Two buttons, in fact. One for force feeding and one for fire. Okay, so the next thing we want, of course, we need power for these two. And I will show you a perfect example of the necessity of force feeding in just a moment. I don't think I need this anymore, so I'll override it, and we'll chuck this down in the world. 
course, there's a wee bit of a glitch with the Bertha cannons at the moment. Um, <laughs> Alright, but as you can see, it has loaded the artillery cannon. So if we just go... Oops. Um, I pressed the full speed button there. Here's our push... Oh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to add some weight blocks to the center of the uh, platform. Because apparently it tilting down is not a very good idea. Alright. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you now. And fire. Perfect. As you can see, it now reloads, and I can fire it again. Okay, so we have got our reloading, and that's good. But for our artillery cannon, it has a much different timing that we actually need it to be on for the artillery cannon than it does the Bertha cannon. So I'm going to show you guys how you can go ahead and make one for the Bertha cannon. The simplest fix is just to go ahead and change this to 9.5 seconds, which is the timings that I found were good for the Bertha cannon. So if we just put this down, connect this to here, connect this to here, Disconnect this from here, and here, and then hook that up to the loaded, power's all hooked up, alright, here we go, and it should, as simple as that, to change it over to the Bertha cannon, except that I have done something wrong, like probably not even hooking up the beater, that's, that's exactly what. Okay, what did I hook that up to? I hooked that up to fire. Okay. Um, it's not really what we wanted there. So we'll just hook that up to there. Unhook that from there. And there we go. We have our firing system. And that there. Is perfect. After, you know, the 10 seconds. Fire it. And then it goes ahead and reloads. Of course we could make it so that the feeder isn't always active. But I don't think there's really much point as it doesn't take up too much power. As you can see, one medium sized battery was enough to power that with 99% remaining. So that there is perfect for me. And... What I'm going to show you next is the way to make this compatible with either the artillery cannon or the Bertha cannon by simply adding another capacitor, like so, hooking that up to there, changing the charge to 3 seconds, 2.9, 3, no, <laughs> changing the discharge to 3 seconds, and that to 0, and then we grab a AND gate, two AND gates in fact, and I'm going to pull this over here because I don't want this in that way. Alright, we grab ourselves an AND gate, well for this other side, stored charge goes into here, stored charge goes into here, and then we grab another OR gate and hook those two into it, and that into there. Okay, so how do we decipher between these two? You may wonder, because this is basically an on-off switch for either of these inputs. So the way I, I like to do this is a property toggle. Okay, so my property toggle goes ahead and gives me an option inside of the editor to basically switch it between a Bertha and an artillery cannon. So to do that we want a not gate, because this is an on-off output. And we go 
and the num type and our on input we want that to be our Bertha let's say and off is artillery and our value is going to be off so if our on label is our Bertha then for our Bertha which is 9.5 seconds we want that when that's on for that to be going through but we went, want it so that when it's off and it's on the artillery toggle we're going to send that to there so that when it's off artillery goes through and Bertha doesn't it's as simple as that so if I swap this over to Bertha it should reload the Bertha just fine Bertha appears to be reloading simple as that. However, if we want to, instead of a Bertha, we want to reload an artillery cannon, go ahead and swap these over. Unhook it from here. Unhook the feeder. Unhook the fire. Get up to there. Oh my goodness, I've done it again. Um, got feeder up. We could actually make these two one output, but I like to separate them. I'm not entirely sure why, but I just do. Um, so there we go, we've got it hooked up to our artillery cannon and I've still left it on Bertha. We'll go back into the editor. We just swap it over. Ah, yep, artillery. Spawn. And as you can see, just perfect. It's now loading our artillery cannon. There we go. Now the reason you may want a force feed is first off if you have a third or fourth or fifth round and you've just got them sitting beside it like this. So we've got a high explosive here but we can't reload it. So hang on I'll just wait until this is empty. This is almost a semi-automatic gun now. Alright. Now our issue is now, but as you can see here, it's closed. And if I put a new round in there, it's not actually going to pull it through. So all I've got to do is push our force feed. Easy as that, until it's reloaded. And then it starts a cycle again, where as soon as it's unloaded, it reloads. Just like that. Alright. Another reason why you may wish to have a force feed button is for, say, a vehicle that might go underwater at some point, like this. I'm just going to hit it, take it over to a, um, take it over to the water. So as you can see here, I can no longer reload this cannon. I can actually no longer fire or reload this cannon. So if I get out of the water, somehow, um, <laughs> I'll try and make it up this side here, because I've taken myself to a place where I can't actually escape. But if I try and reload this cannon once I'm out of water, it's not going to work unless I force feed it. So if I go manual force feed override, it will actually make it um, restart the cycle. Because once it's underneath the water, the cannon automatically just disables. And so yeah, that's basically my process of making a microcontroller that reloads a cannon. So if you want to make your own, here's the tutorial. If you want to go ahead and grab mine off the um, off the workshop, it will be there by the time this video comes out. Then you can go ahead and grab it off the workshop. 
It's already got this built in. It's got... It's basically the same as what I've just built there. But... Yeah. Thanks for watching. This is my tutorial. And I'll see you guys in the next video.